Okay, so we're gonna try to do this whole tub surround with just this little inexpensive tabletop saw. Uh, it is a little bit cumbersome to rip down full pieces of tile like this on something like this. Uh, it's just gonna take some patience, some time. You can't really force it. You kind of have to let the blade cut. Uh, we have the existing blade that we bought with this. Um, this is a $200 saw at Harbor Freight. So it's, uh, you know, so far I'm pretty happy with it. I think you could pretty much do an entire tub surround like this pretty easily. So let's measure over seven inches. That's the size of tile that we want for our first row. Okay, yeah, pretty good cuts. Just to show you the difference of how much faster a snap cutter really is though. You know, you can pretty much just stick this on here. And if you hit it a lot. Yeah, quicker of a cut. So it's definitely a lot faster with a snap cutter, but that saw does pretty good with cutting it. You know, ceramic tile is usually really easy to, to cut. Okay, so when it comes to thin set, this is really where I think you should spend a little bit of extra money and get a good quality thin set. It's gonna make tile setting so much easier. And when you get something like Ardex X5, um, this is a non-sag modified thin set. So it makes it easier when you're setting the tile, they don't move as much. But what's really great about this stuff, you have plenty of pot life. Most of the time, uh, I've gotten at least three hours worth of pot life, you know, after you mix it, the time that you can take to use it. And that's really helpful for, for beginners because you need a lot more time to be able to cut all these things, especially if you're using the wet saw like I am today. So, you know, spend a little extra money on this, maybe save yourself for a little bit on those tile saws, but spend the extra money on the, ta on the uh, thin set, it's gonna make it a lot easier. Always measure your water too, as well. So let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna just we're gonna just mix a half a bag and we have we're gonna use our beast mixer this is a rubber liner kind of saves buckets makes it kind of nice and uh basically three and a half quarts a nice big powerful mixer like this is really helpful obviously not a, a requirement just get one that has like the four prong paddles on it because you need to be able to spin and, and mix the thin set efficiently. When it comes to trials, there's many different sizes out there, obviously. Uh, we're doing the 12 by 24 inch ceramic tiles. So you're gonna want something that's a little bit bigger so that you can make sure that you get plenty of coverage behind it. Uh, so you really can use, all three of these are pretty efficient trials. So we have a 3 8 by 3 8 inch square notch trowel, totally sufficient most likely to cover this. A 3 8 by half inch U-notch trowel, so that gives you a little bit more than the 3 8 by 3 8 You have the Euro trowel, which is kind of a combination of a quarter, 3 8 and half inch trowel. You can see the kind of funky pattern on the back. Um, I really like using these. These are really efficient for getting good coverage. It collapses the ridges and it makes it really, um, <clears throat> you know, it gives basically the minimum amount of thin sets that you need to cover large format tile. And then if you really do have kind of an uneven substrate, you can even go up to a half inch by half inch. Um, I do this on floors a lot when I have any type of unevenness. This allows you to be able to collapse the ridges, have plenty of thin set underneath the tile and, and eliminate the lippage. But it really all comes down to what your substrate is and how flat it is. Uh, most of the time, if it's pretty flat, this just works out properly. But you want to check the coverage of the tile that you set and then bump up the size of trowel if you're not getting what you would consider good coverage. So we'll demonstrate that, but we're going to use our Euronauts trowel. It's pretty much my favorite trowel to use. And uh, yeah, so first thing is, is uh, we're going to set this first tile. Let's make sure that this is going to work here fine. That's my cut piece. That's pretty good. <laughs> the factory edge, I couldn't even really uh, see here. So that's a good, good problem to have here. So it looks like a little high on this side. It must be probably just some of my stuff there. So we'll just do a little bit of a grind cut. 
to make sure that this stays even. But you want to have uh, expansion contraction at the bottom of the tub. But let's go ahead and fine tune this piece before we go setting it. So this is where this shop vac setup is really nice because I'm able to describe cut right here. Okay, so you can see this is a really kind of pancake type of batter thin set and you would consider that's a, pr a pretty nice non-sag. So the first step is just to burn the thin set into the substrate so that you get good coverage. So take the flat side of the trowel and just work that into the substrate. You want to do directional troweling. And then something like this, you want to back butter it. So take the flat side of the trowel and just coat that whole back. Okay, so let's just make sure we're going to be where we want to be here. We'll just even this up. So 17 and three quarter, 17 and a half, 17 and five eighths. 17 and 5 eighths, so that's directly centered there. You want to make sure that those ridges are collapsed. And then we want to provide just a little space between the tub. And you can also just make sure you shim up to your laser level here. You know, the first row is really just about paying attention to that laser and making sure that that's completely even across there. So let's go ahead and cut our side pieces. So we've got 17 and 5 eighths. Make it like 17 and three A's. Give ourselves a little more. You can even do 17 and a quarter. And I should mention the main reason that I'm doing the back wall first is so that when I bring my wall tile on the sides, it kind of hides the grout joint from your visual reference from the outside of the shower. So that really kind of takes a little bit of the stress off starting out on your tile work, doing the back wall first. Uh, and it really, you know, you're gonna be caulking that corner but the important thing is to make sure that everything, the cuts and everything are, are gonna be good on this side. It'll be a lot easier just to focus on one side of the, the, the area. So let's go ahead and cut these 17, yeah, 17 and three A's. So 17 and three A's. Okay, so anytime you put that on a wet saw, you wanna wipe it down so the water can actually be a bond breaker. So just have a rag on hand. Now the other thing we're gonna be using that's gonna make this a lot easier is a leveling system. So this is called Perfect Level Master. And then what this is gonna do is allow us to tighten and make sure that we don't have any lippage in between the tiles. So we'll just put one on each side of this tile and then the wedge system we'll hold it into place. So let's just double check our height here. No, that's the, I'll tell you what, I can't even tell which one's the factory edge here. That's actually a pretty good problem. Okay, so see what this laser looks like. Looks pretty good. Let me just take this and tighten it so that makes it so it's all nice and even in between the tiles kind of makes it's kind of gives you some extra leverage to be able to do that um, you know these leveling clips are definitely a very helpful system for something like this all right so let's do the other side it's a little high here on the back end so we got to scribe cut this to make sure that this laser stays even So when you're selecting a leveling clip, you really want to pay attention to the sides of your tile. So as you can see here, this is completely straight, rectified. So when I put this, because these come in different sizes, this comes in 16th uh, or 132nd, 16th, and then eighth inch. So these are basically are the spacers. So if you have a tile that's not rectified, make sure you get the smaller size clips 
so you can get the size grout joint that you want. Um, I usually prefer 16th inch grout joints, but that really is all of personal preference. So since this is nice and rectified, we're going with 1 16th. And we basically just do the same pattern on the next row. So for the leveling clips, just take a finger or a margin trowel, wipe off the top layer of the tile because you want to eliminate the thin set from wedging in between. And typically I go with two pieces on either side. So two clips on either side to tension it. Okay, so this is where you can pull back a tile and just check your coverage. So you can see, I basically have everything suctioning off of here. It's not too bad. You just wanna make sure that you see it's suctioning off. You don't wanna see the trial lines not being um, collapsed or not having, you know, if you just saw compressed trial lines and they're not kind of, um, you know, deformed in any way, then that means that you're not getting enough coverage on it. So again, let's measure this again. So 11, 13, 16. This little tool is really helpful. This little linoleum knife allows you to maneuver things so that you can move the tile to where you need it. Take these wedges and it really helps force these things to stay in line with one another.